5 to 15. Okay? So can we all rise? Let's all stand as we honor God's word. Join me no, in your Bibles, whatever version you have, or whatever translation that you have. And let's read no, verses 5 to 15. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay, let's pray. As we continue to worship, Lord, we pray that the Spirit continually works in our hearts as we listen to the sermon that we believe that you have prepared for us. As we listen with our external ears, we pray, Lord, that the ears of our heart may be opened and may be kept open by you, Lord, so that we may hear, Lord, what you desire for us to hear. And may you place the desire in our hearts to be doers of your word and not just hearers, O oh God. We are trusting always this morning that the conviction of the Holy Spirit will come upon each and every one of us, that we may be humbled enough for us to seek your grace, for us to be able to practice these things. We are also trusting that if there are hearts that need to be born again today, that will be your move, O oh Lord. We pray that hearts will be opened to see the kingdom of heaven. So we thank you. Even now, all glory belongs to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, we can have our seats, brethren. Again, uh, I hope you don't mind. Huh? Every time I begin my sermon, I try to bring us back to the very uh, major picture of what the Gospel of Matthew is about. The Gospel of Matthew was Jesus Christ, of course. He is the Gospel. But that the promised king okay, that was promised ever since Genesis, the time of Abraham, and then promised through the seed of David, this promised king has now come. So that's who our Messiah is. Our Messiah is the king. Not only is, the king of, is he the king of Israel, but he is the king also of all Gentiles who believe. That's why he is not just the son of David, but he's also the son of Abraham. And because of that, he has all authority. After Jesus' death and resurrection, Matthew 28 ends by saying, by Jesus saying, all authority has been given to me. Okay? Now, when you read that verse, it's either your hearts remain unmoved or when you read that verse, your heart bows down and says, Lord, ikaw gali ang hari. No? Ikaw gali dapat ang hari sang ako nga kabuhi. And because of that, by faith, he becomes the king of your life. So you notice there's so many titles of Jesus Christ, diba? He's not just Savior, okay? but he's also Lord, but he's also King, okay? the promised King. Okay? And as a King with authority in the Sermon on the Mount, he now expresses this authority by his teaching. No? So dapat kinikilala naton ang authority sang Diyos 
pag ginabasa naton ang sininga portion sa Matthew. No? And as I mentioned, Matthew has so many big groups of teachings that he brings in his gospel compared to other gospels kasi pinapakita gid ni Matthew kung sino si Lord. Okay? So we're in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Now, again, the Sermon on the Mount is not a to-do list. Okay? This is not a list that, that, that God is giving you and saying, amuni ang dapat himo onyo. Hindi. The Sermon on the Mount is the presentation of the kingdom. Okay? Jesus is preaching about the kingdom. And the more we read about the kingdom, this should humble us and make us realize na Lord, hindi ko galikaya. Hindi ko Lord masarangan ang mga ginambal mo. Ang problema, amunin ang kingdom eh. If you are a disciple of the kingdom, this is what's going to happen. So all of these teachings are meant for us to realize that without the king and without our being in the kingdom, we cannot fulfill all of these things. Okay? Dapat klaro na siya. The Christian life is not about God telling us to be obedient because we cannot. The Christian life is about God telling us that if you put your faith in me and recognize who I am, I will work this righteousness in your hearts. Okay? That's why ang tuod ng believer, hindi kita maka, kwane, maka boast. Eh. We cannot boast. No? Hindi, hindi, hindi tayo pwede magyabang. And especially when you enter in, into eternity, you cannot say, Lord, this is who I was. This is what I did. Hindi. We know that everything is all from the Lord. So the Beatitudes showed us the inherent character of the kingdom. The next uh, teaching was the very intent of the righteousness of the kingdom, which is salt and light. <coughs> Excuse me. No? Um, and then we saw how we are to surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees and teachers of the law. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By Jesus showing us his understanding, his heart about the law. Okay? Now, in this section that we are in, in chapter 6, <clears throat> we are dealing with acts of righteousness. Now, could you turn to verse 1? Look at what Paul, this is the, uh, what Paul, what Jesus said. This is the very foundation of the three teachings that we have here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew 6, verse 1. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Okay? So as I shared last Sunday, you will notice that unlike the previous, pas the previous passage or the previous portion, Jesus was not changing the acts of righteousness. Hindi pareha sa law. He was changing the mindset and understanding. Diri, ang ininga acts of righteousness, they were acts na dapat himoon sang disciple of the kingdom. So Jesus is not teaching against them. Jesus is dealing with the heart and the motive of all of these acts of righteousness. Now we have three examples, giving to the needy, prayer, and fasting. But there are many other acts of righteousness. Now, coming here on Sunday is an act of righteousness. Serving in ministry, is an act of righteousness. The giving of our tithes and love offerings, acts of righteousness. Na, okay? what, God, what Jesus deals with here is the heart. When we do these acts, who are we doing it for? So these are public acts. Na? Ang kristyano, hindi sekreto ang aton nga pagka-kristyanismo. Public siya. We're not only supposed to be good and righteous in our hearts, we're supposed to show it. To others. Okay? Now, when we do and show it to others, who are we doing it for? Are we doing it for men or are we doing it for God? So last Sunday, we talked about giving. Okay? When we give to the needy, Jesus said that we should not give for men to see. No? So we see that in verse 2. When you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. Okay? Kabalo naman kita, there's nothing wrong in the world. Okay? In the world, when you give millions no, 
to ABS-CBN or GMA or to UNICEF or whatever, there's really a tendency that they will put your name in public to thank us, diba? to thank you for that donation that you've done. No? So, wala problema na. No? But in the kingdom of God, this is not how it's supposed to be done. In the kingdom of God, yes, we're supposed to give to the needy, but we're not supposed to announce it so that other people will see, na look at me, I'm giving. Am I not a good Christian? Diba? Am I not a good disciple of the Lord? Okay? So that's why in our tithe boxes, we do not have bells that you ring. Every time I drop my envelope, ding, 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 diba? look at me, I'm dropping an envelope. No? No, kung may unod siya, why takabalo? Pero at least makita nila, nag-drop ka mo envelope. Di ba? Kuha nyo? Don't do what I said. Okay? Important. That's kasi mo ng problema. When you're doing it for men, you want other people to see. Now, it does not mean you do it in secret. The Lord is dealing with the heart. People may see you drop an envelope in the box. That's not what the Lord is teaching. What the Lord is teaching is when you're giving, anong imong motive? Your motive is not to be honored. Your motive is not for men to see. Your motive is simply, Lord, this is for you. Okay? Now, uh, specifically, giving to the needy, an example, the Lord. But of course, this extends to every kind of generous act of giving that you will do. It should be done in secret. Okay? Now, this morning, we will talk about another act of righteousness, which is prayer. Okay? Verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Okay? Now, if you've read the whole passage, we'll go through it one by one. The issue being dealt here with the Lord, again, is about the heart. Okay? So, when you pray. So, expected give sa isa ka disciple of the kingdom of heaven to pray. It's, it's expected. Prayer is not something that is taught. You will notice, no? if, you, if you are walking as a disciple of the king, wala naman nagtudlo sa imo kung paano ka mag-pray. Eh. All of a sudden, you just begin to pray. No? And I'm not just talking about praying when you're sick or praying when you have a problem. No? Many people do that. You will notice when you become a disciple of the kingdom, prayer becomes so natural that you're just continually fellowshipping and, and praying to the Lord. No? While you're driving, while you're at home, basta nag-story ka, pilmi kay Lord, amo na ang prayer. Okay? So, that's why it's again, when you pray. No? Prayer is not something that is taught. Prayer is something that naturally comes out of fellowship. Now, the issue here is also not public prayer. Kasi wala naman problema sa public prayer. Whether it was praying in the synagogue or in the corners, that was not the issue. Again, di ba? it's very obvious. The issue here was they love to pray standing in the synagogues to be seen by men. That was the reason that they were praying. No? And if the desire of the heart is that they see us pray, ano ang pinaka-motive sina? Diba? Now, it's not written, but I think we can conclude. No? If we pray and we want others to see us pray, maybe similar to giving, we want them to honor us, we want them to recognize, uy, tanawa, napaka-prayerful sa iya. No? Nagka-pray siya in public. No? Because public prayer, brethren, even today, is something that God, that God also expects. It's an act of righteousness for us to pray in public. So I, I do that when I stand here in the pulpit. Okay? If, you're, if you're the speaker or the preacher on a Sunday, we're called to uh, pray in public. The worship leader prays in public. When you join us for congregational prayer, you're praying in public. When someone asks you to pray for the food, you pray in public, di ba? When a pastor is asked to pray in the city hall or whatever it is, mga pub public prayer is an act of righteousness. It's part of the Christian life. So, hindi nagkahambal si Lord na bawal ang public prayer. No. We will pray in public. We will pray in private. Here, the Lord is dealing with, again with the heart 
the motive of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law of praying, standing in the synagogues on the street corners. For what motive? To be seen by men. Okay? Now, it's a very um, applicable teaching okay? because all of us have this tendency no? for us to be praying in public so that others will see and say, wow, di ba? Kanami sa iyang prayer, di ba? Grabe mag-pray si Brother Amuni or si Sister Amuna, okay? And that tendency is found in many of us when we're asked to pray in public, we always say, ay, hindi ko, hindi ko. No, ha? Have you noticed that? I mentioned this last Sunday, but now this is the right time to talk about it. How many of us, you're in a gathering and then someone asks you, oh, bro, or sister, pwede ka magpray? Ay, hindi, hindi, hindi pa ako ready. Okay? Ready for what? Okay. Hindi ko kabalo ko ng words ang ihambal ko or whatever. So, why are you making that excuse? Okay? Think about it carefully. Why are you making that excuse? Na, hindi ako. Why? Because you're now conscious, notice, you're conscious about what people will say about your prayer. Uh, di ba? That means that when you begin to pray, you are doing it for men and not for God. Notice that? See? That's why this is very applicable for us. This is not just for Pharisees or teachers of the law or pastors. Pastors, of course, dak mo man ang temptation sa abon. Na, na pag nag-pray kami, para man sa men. Diba? It, it, I don't know, I, I've, I've never been to Bible school, I've never been to seminary, so I don't know if that is taught in Bible school or seminary. Diba? How to pray. Diba? Our Father in Heaven. Tapos, dapat ba may ano ng Our Father in Heaven. Uh, diba? Dapat kasi pag pastor ka, diba? da, dapat dala, dala mo yung mga ginamemorize mo na scripture, na in prayer, etc. Why? Because you want them to say, Wow, what a beautiful prayer. That's why, ang gatabopin me, sino mag-pray? Si pastor ang mag-pray. Kaya kanami mag-pray si pastor. Oh, di ba? So when they ask you to pray, ay hindi ako prayas kay pastor. Mali eh, di ba? Notice. But you know, even us, we're tempted. We're tempted to pray so that other people will say, wow, that was a good prayer. No? So instead of saying, amen, they will say, wow, Katahong sang iyang a prayer. Hindi. Ang dapat reaction sang tao sa prayer, Amen. Diba? They hear the prayer, they don't judge the prayer. Okay? But you notice how we are all susceptible to this. Diba? We're all susceptible. Okay? And I'm hoping that after the sermon this morning, okay, when we ask any one of you to pray for the food, all of you will say, All right. Diba? Okay. When we ask you to put your phones in silent, you will put it in silent. Oh, while I'm not looking, put your phone in silent. Sige. Okay, can you do that? Sige, everyone check your phones kasi nalipat kita mag-ano eh, magpa-ano kay Paula na ibutang ang announcement. Okay? Oh, I'm not looking. Check your phones. Para hindi ko kabalo kung sino na eh. I'm not sure who you are. Okay? So, check it na. Okay. So, we are to be careful about our intentions when we have public prayer. Okay? What does Jesus say? Look at verse 6. But when you pray, go into your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Okay? So in other words, hindi ka conscious kasi ang tao is seen. Eh, di ba? So when you're in front of these people, your tendency is, okay, wow, how will I speak? No? How will I talk? Kasi amo na, hindi. You're praying to your father who is unseen. Then, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, here is Jesus teaching us what true prayer is. Okay? True prayer is not praying for men. True prayer is praying for God. It's praying to God. It's praying for Him. Amuna ka simple. Okay? Jesus is not necessarily telling us or teaching us about a prayer time. Because if you look at the going to your room, 
Ang iba nga versions gani, inner room eh. Di ba? Go to your inner room, close the door. Because ma many of the houses, if not all the houses during the time of Jesus, hindi naman pareha sa aton eh. Na may mga rooms eh. Most of the families slept in one big living room. If ever they had a second floor, no, no, the, the, the rooftop, Okay, but they had, not many had inner room. So Jesus was not talking about pag quiet time ka. This is not about quiet time. This is not about prayer time. Although it's good for us today when we pray to go to, to a room and be with the Lord in secret. That, that's, the, that's great. But this is not what the Lord is talking about. Okay? The picture here, whether public or private, is what? The Lord sees your heart. When you are praying, you are praying to the Lord. That is why what you say and how you say it is focused in the Lord. Hindi tawo. Okay? We are not here to pray to people. Okay? So the picture here again is showing that in the secret place of our heart, this is where we are praying, okay? And this is what God sees. When, if you are at home and you have your prayer time, you have a moment when you're praying, okay? Remember that you're doing it for the Lord. So you're just conversing with God. You're, you listen to God by reading His Word, okay? That's basically what it is. That's why if you have a prayer time, gabasa ka Word of God. Why? Because that's God speaking to you. Okay? God speaking to you is not waiting for a voice to say, Ricky, diba? Kumusta ka na? Okay, good Lord. Okay? Tiyanong himo na itong subong. Wako ka pula ko ka Lord. Ano ba ang plano mo? Delikado na. Okay? I'm not saying that God cannot. Okay? We have to be careful because all over the word of God, we see the Lord conversing with these people. I'm not saying it. we cannot. All I'm saying is, we don't know it. Eh. Are we speaking to ourselves? Diba? It could be us. Eh. Diba? Lord, please forgive me. I forgive you. <gasps> Salamat, Lord. Eh? Diba? Or should it be the Word? The Word speaks to us. Eh? The Word ministers to us. But when we start to pray now, when we start to speak, we need to remember, I'm speaking to God. I am praying to God. Okay? So that intention is important. And that, that, that settles everything. Na ang tanan na ginahambal ko, na ginapangayo ko, kay Lord ko ginahambal. It's not meant for other people to hear. It's meant for God to hear. Okay? It's not meant for other people to see. It's meant for God to see. Even in public. Okay? That, that, as I mentioned, the temptation to pray according to what we think other people want to hear, delikado na. Okay? Dapat, pag ginpa-pray ka for the food, okay, close your eyes, and as you're praying for the Lord to bless the food, you're speaking to God. You're not speaking to the people. You're speaking to God and you're saying, Lord, bless this food, Lord. In Jesus' name. Ang iba naman sa ito, hala, kalipot naman sa ngayang prayer. No, question is, did he or she pray? What he or her, she or he wanted God to do was he speaking to the Lord. Okay? Dili, delikado yung mga intercessors. Eh, diba? Kasi pag ang intercessor, ginpa-pray mo para sa food, sometimes sa ilang experience, ginadala nila anay sa government, kag sa individual needs, uh, di ba? Uh, joke lang na, intercessors, uh, pasi, hindi ka mo na, no? But, uh, but there's a tendency, di ba? Now, this is not about emotion, because of course, when we become emotional in prayer, sometimes nadala kita, di ba? But the point is this, when you are praying for food, for a person who is sick, or whatever, when you close your eyes, you're speaking to God. That's what you need to remember. You're not speaking to the person in the hospital bed. You're not, speak, you're not speaking to, to uh, members of the church. No, when you close your eyes, you're speaking to God. So at that moment, Lord, what should I be praying for? Okay? Now, you do not shorten your prayer just because nahuya ka or what. Again, sino ang focus na? Ikaw. 
See, notice how important it is. When you close your eyes in public prayer, okay? that's, that's what I practice when I pray in the pulpit. No, the, I don't, my prayers are not written. Eh. Diba? Every time I pray, I, I try to pray according to what I believe the Lord and the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart concerning the word or before the sermon. Okay? So, hindi siya prepared. Hindi siya scripted. And that's what's important. That's what Jesus is saying. Go to the secret pla place of your heart and pray to your Father. Even if it becomes a little long, sige lang, ikaw na kag si Lord eh. Ga, na, ano kayo, naga, naga pasalamat ka kay Lord, ga pangayo ka kay Lord. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Okay? So how do we know that the Lord hears us? Whatever our prayer is. Look at verse 7. Jesus deals with it also. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling. This is the NIV. No? Do not keep on babbling like pagans. Now, this is the key. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Okay? Amunang key phrase that. Now, the ESV uses the phrase, do not heap up empty phrases. Okay? The NASB translates it meaningless repetition. Okay? Meaningless. So in other words, you're repeating something again and again, but it's meaningless. So King James Version, it's vain repetitions. Now, again, is this talking about, kasi some of us, when we pray, especially with emotion, sometimes pa ulit ulit siya, di ba? Kasi out of your emotion, Lord, I, please, I pray, Lord, for your healing upon my sickness. Lord, please heal my prayer. That's not what this is talking about. Because sometimes in our emotion, our tendency is to say something again and again, even the name of the Lord, di ba? Lord, please. It's not that we're, we want to say it again and again so that He hears us. Sometimes nagadala kita sa emotion. That's not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is talking about is about people who think that they will be heard by the words that they speak. Okay, so kinanglan, i I repeat ko siya, liwaton ko siya again and again and again so that I want to make sure that the Lord hears it. Now, the NIV says that it, they, it's like pagans or the Bible says it's like the pagans because the pagans, you notice most religions, most religions, they have chants, di ba? Na kinanglan, ano, paulit-ulit, di ba? Uh, who, who was I talking about that uh, uh, just a few days ago about yung song ni ng, uh, uh, it's not the Beatles it's George Harrison I think na, My Sweet Lord di ba? so during our time that was a popular song di ba? so My Sweet Lord tapos Hallelujah di ba? ang ibang diri hindi nyo kilala si George Harrison di ba? so anyway tapos you notice feeling mo kung isa wow Christian song kasi My Sweet Lord Hallelujah tapos later on you will notice, he starts saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, ang my sweet Lord na gali, hindi gali si Jesus. Ang tanan nga Lord, dala si Hare Krishna. Ang mga delikado sa songs. Dapat gina-check nyo pin me. Just because they put the word Lord, does that mean, di ba, that it's talking about Jesus? Pero amo ng Hare Krishna. They, they sing it again and again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare. Some Christians are like that. Paulit-ulit na, na chanting. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, di ba? And God, what Jesus is saying is that these are meaningless. These are vain. Why? Because God does not hear us according to the number of words that we say or even the quality of the word. What does verse 8 say? Jesus said, do not be like them. Why? For your father only wants short sentences. Ay, ano yung nakasulat? Okay. <laughs> ano nga Jesus? Your father knows what you need 
before you ask Him. So it's not about, Lord, para sigurado na mabatian mo ang ako nga prayer, I will, I will pray this again and again and ten times to make sure that you hear. That's the intention eh. That's the wrong intention. I'm sorry, the wrong understanding of the intention. How do we know that God hears us? It's by faith. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. That's what you check with your prayer. If you're going to pray to your Father in heaven, the next thing that your heart says is, Lord, I believe that you know what I need before I ask you. Okay? And because of that, I'm not going to try and convince you. I'm not going to try to make sure that I will say so many words para masigurado ko lang na nabatian mo ang ako nga prayer. Hindi. Di ba? Lord, you know what I need already. What an important aspect that is. Eh? Because for example, you are sick and you come to the Lord in prayer. Does the Lord know you are sick? Of course. Di ba? And so, we don't keep on praying, Lord, heal me, heal me, Lord, heal me in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. O di ba? Napaulit-ulit para Lord, masigurado ko lang hindi. Lord, you know what I need before I ask. So how does that affect your prayer? There's, there's no formula. Okay? What's important is your heart just bows down and just prays, Lord, you know what I need even before I ask you. So some people will say, so why do we ask? if the Lord knows what we need. So no need to pray. Hindi. You know why? As a child, your father wants you coming to him. Okay? And he wants you coming to him, saying, Father, may sakit ako, Lord. Okay? Paliok, Lord. Pwede mo heal So you don't think that, should I pray that five more times to make sure that he hears me? Diba? The text ba na, nag-text ka, tapos two minutes, wala pa sabat? Ala, text ko siya, di what? Di ba? Relax lang, di ba? Basi may technical problem ang smart, di ba? Or basi nasa banjo siya, nagkapaligo, o di ba? So, hindi ka mag-expect. No? Sometimes we're like that with God. To make sure, Lord, that you hear me, I will keep on praying. That's why we have to check our hearts. Eh. So, I will pray, I will text everybody to pray, ipapray ko pa sa congregational prayer para sigurado mabatian ni Lord. Oh, mali na eh. Diba? If that's why you're giving your prayer request to the congregational prayer or for the congregational prayer for us to pray, para sigurado mabatian ni Lord, mali na. See? So that's the reason why we have the tendency to keep on repeating our prayers. Diba? It's not even, so once lang ba, pastor? Hindi pa pwede may magpray para sa ako? That's not the issue here. The issue here is, do you believe that your father knows what you need even before you ask. Diba? Do you believe that? Because if you believe that, it simplifies your prayer. And it simplifies your action. You do not keep bumbling. You do not heap up empty phrases. There is no meaningless repetition. Okay? Now notice how this breaks many practices of certain Christian sects. Di ba? Nakinanglan, paulit-ulit ang isa ka prayer para mabatian ni Lord. Hindi. Di ba? Hindi gali. Because the Lord does not hear according to the number of times we've prayed. The Lord hears. Why? Because He sees our hearts. Number one, we're praying to Him. Number two, we believe. Lord, You know what I need even before I ask. So, grab his Lord, no? Notice how he's checking our hearts. Okay? It's not about the words. It's not even about how many times you've said it. No. It's about meaningless, vain repetition of prayers. Okay? A prayer can be so simple. How many of us, maybe you're in deep trouble, May ara ka trials, may pagtilaw ka sa imong kabuhi, and you bow down. And sometimes all you can say is, Lord. Tapos wala ka mahambal? You think the Lord does not hear your prayer? Because He knows what you're praying for. He knows your need. Okay? But it's that faith that God honors. Eh. 
Well, Lord, I know that you, it's not even, I know you here. Eh. Nak, nakita nyo? Hindi, Lord, kabalo ko na gapamati ka. Hindi, Lord, you know what I need. And that's why all I have to do is to present myself to you. And which is why there are some of us. Sometimes we don't even pray for our needs. We just come before the Father. The Father just give you my life. I give you today, Lord. I don't know exactly what will happen today, but I give you today. Now, sometimes it's all right to pray for needs. The Lord may financial, medyo tight ako financially subong. Lord, kung pwede, buli ka mo, Lord, or answer my prayer. Yeah, but you, you don't just keep on praying and praying and praying so that you're sure that God hears. No. I know, Lord, that you know what I need even before I ask. That's, uh, that's why sometimes, you know what prayer does? Prayer changes your prayer. Okay? Did you hear that carefully? Sometimes prayer changes your prayer because sometimes we think we know what we need and we keep on praying for it until later on the Spirit moves our heart and says, that's not what you need. Diba? I will answer you with something else. And then your, your heart is just submitted diba? to the sovereignty of your God. Okay. So here we see what the Lord is dealing with. First, do not pray so that other people will see, to be seen by men. We pray to God. When we pray, it's not the number of words or even how we are praying it that is important. What we believe is that the Lord knows what we need even before we ask Him. That's all. So that should be the way that we pray. So verse 9 continues. This then is how you should pray. Okay? Now, taking the first two teachings of the Lord. Number one, we're praying to God. Number two, we, we, we are praying, believing that He already knows what we need. That's why walang vain repetition, walang meaningless repetition. Okay? That's why this scriptural teaching breaks diba? A tra the traditional way of, of reading this prayer. No? How many of you, when we started reading this morning, no? pagsugod sa aton ka kwan, when you started with Our Father in Heaven, you were tempted to read with me? Diba? Kasi kadako, kung, da, kung nagdako ka Roman Catholic, di ba? May tala, ari na, our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will. You know, sometimes we think that the prayer itself is what God will hear, uh, di ba? Or sometimes, hala, kinaglan, ten times ko i-pray ang ininga prayer. Kaya si Lord mismo ang naghatag sa sininga prayer. Hindi, we have to go to the first two teachings of the Lord. How meaningless repetition does not apply to this. So what was the Lord showing us? It's not about the prayer itself. We think na, ay, amuni. Amuni ang prayer. Oh, di ba? So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay ba? Di ba? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, in, as it is in heaven. Na naichindihan nyo ba na? O nga, pa ulit-ulit mo ginapray, hindi mo naichindihan yung your kingdom come. Oh, di ba? Your will be done on earth. Give us today our daily bread. Eh, sino ba sa aton? Sa aga, nag-bread kita. Sa lunch ka dinner, rice. Di ba? So, nga a bread lang ang i-pray mo. So, obviously, it's not literal. Okay? Jesus is not saying, this is the prayer that you pray. It's not about the exact words that are written here. Kasi, bago lang nagaba si Lord eh. Hindi naman meaningless repetition eh. Di ba? It's not about the sequence. Dapat mauna ba ang Our Father? Tapos ang pinakauli, ang deliver me from temptation? No, it's not about the sequence. That's why the key word there in verse 9 is this then is how you should pray. Jesus did not say this is what you should pray. Ete, ma-apply ang paulit-ulit na Lord's Prayer. Hindi, hindi naman siya nagabal what. This is how you should pray. So Jesus gives us a general pattern of how in the secret place of our heart we are to come to Him diba? and pray. How do we do that? Okay. So Jesus gives us general, a general picture of how in the secret of our heart 
do we come to the Father and pray? Secretly, huh? this is not for other people to see. This is for us in the secret of our hearts. So imagine, as I mentioned a while ago, whether public prayer or private prayer, you close your eyes, you're praying to your Father. So Jesus says, so how should you pray? Una, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay, now other versions, okay, uh, because the word hallowed sometimes is not really understood. Eh? Now, uh, there are more modern versions that use the word holy. Diba? Hallowed, holy, holy be your name. So that's what, when you're saying Jesus' name is holy, what are you doing? Okay. When, first, when you say, Father in heaven, okay. Father in heaven, hallowed be, holy be your name. Notice it changes your approach. Eh. Okay. You're not saying, Lord, na, no, come on, Lord, Lord, can do kay say mo, Lord. Where's the reverence? Because that's what it shows. Eh. Diba? Every time we're praying to our Father in heaven, every time you are coming to Him, you recognize His holiness. Now you notice some brethren, I, I'm, not, I know, I'm not criticizing this, but you will notice, you, you can see their intent. There are some brethren, especially from the more traditional evangelical churches, no? they begin by saying, okay, let us come before the Lord. Uh, di ba? Let us come in the presence of the Lord. Shh, ipos na, ma-pray ta. Uh, di ba? <laughs> Daw na dula sa presence ni Lord. Eh, di ba? But notice, they say that, why? Because they want the people to pray, okay, masimalipat ko. Di ba? Even in the midst of lechon and uh, bakareta and all of these things, we are in the presence of the Lord. Okay? Now, the point there is when you pray, if you're praying in public or you're praying in private, you're revering the Lord. Eh? Lord, you're here with us. Eh? Diba? So that can bring a lot of words, right? When you pray, it's not just our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Hindi. When you begin to pray, you can already sense it, eh? Father. Diba? And sometimes it brings, Lord, you're so gracious. Lord, salamat gid sa imong faithfulness. And sometimes you begin your prayer that way. And, and you're not doing it because other people are listening. Amo nang delikado, di ba? So if you want to impress people, you can do that, di ba? Our Father in heaven, you are cre the creator in Genesis, di ba? You are the Passover lamb in Exodus. You are the numbers in numbers. You are the Deuteronomy in Deuteronomy. And, the, and people are saying, Krabi mag si Brother, hala, hasta sa revelation ba na, di ba? Kasi ginano niya ang tanan ka books, eh, di ba? So, hindi na ma-appreciate ma nila, ano yung man, di ba? So, we have to be careful. Okay? There's no need for high faluting to impress. Now, if in the reverence of your prayer, you're saying, Father, what? thank you that you are here. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, salamat kids. Important is you're praying to your Father. Okay? You're not impressing. It's the same in public, uh, private prayer. Okay? Why is it so important not to rush during our prayer time? Kasi pag so good sang prayer time mo, hindi ka nagadali, kay malayt ko sa opisina. Hindi, you're sitting down. And you're just revering your father. That's how prayer begins. You're, you're coming to him in reverence. And, and this is not, the Lord is not teaching the right sequence of prayer. Na masugod na lang aray sa worship. And no, no. Ang importante, the whole atmosphere of your prayer time is an atmosphere of reverence. I'm speaking to my father in heaven. His name is holy. Lord, and some of us will burst into song. Some of you, I know you listen to songs in your, in your, uh, in your, your ear pads or whatever it is. Okay lang na. Ang importante is, during that time, your private time, you're, you're revering Him. For you, He is holy. And you will notice, brethren, when you begin your prayer that way, uh, privately, you're already preparing your heart for whatever you're going to say after that. Because you're not talking to a genie. You're not talking to a human boss. No, I'm talking to God. And He's my Father. And His name is holy. So it, it just moves your heart 
to bow down before Him. So our prayer must express that attitude even in public prayer, brethren. Even in public prayer, when you ask brethren, let's bow down our heads, what do you want them to do? You want them to revere the God that you are praying with. You see? And so you begin your prayer in that way. So we do not just casually come before God. Our hearts are always bowing down and considering His name holy. Then Jesus said in verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here is another important aspect of prayer. Now remember, hindi sequence ang ginatudlo ni Lord. Ha? Nauna, worship. Tapo, hindi. These are all parts of prayer that will just come out ang importante na insindihan mo. So kung reverence ang our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name, by praying your kingdom come and your will be done, here is an expression of submission. Okay? Why? Notice the word your. Okay? When you are in prayer, you are focusing on Him. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. In other words, sa heaven, nakasulat na eh. Nag-decide na si Lord ko ano ang iyang will eh. Diba? So you're not telling God to do something. You're not telling Him, Amuni ang importante, Lord, para sa akin. You're saying, Lord, I'm submitting to Your will. Your kingdom come. What does this mean? Jesus was teaching His disciples concerning the kingdom. Okay? Now, if we use uh, the Sermon on the Mount, you, you just heard Jesus talk about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. When you're saying, Lord, your kingdom come, you're already praying for that character. Lord, may that character come upon my heart. May your righteousness... So, and it's not just the Sermon on the Mount. It's the whole word. Every time you read the word, Lord, ang ang imuha kingdom. You are king. This is your righteousness. Lord, your kingdom come. And this is also future. Why? Because we all know that the kingdom of God today is in our heart. Okay? We can live in a sinful world, in a chaotic world. But as a disciple of the king, here we're living that life. So you can be working for the government, for example, and 99.9% .9 are corrupt. Oh, oh, wag naman, oh, sobrang daw, daw tananggit korap, no? 99.8 na lang, okay? So, anyway, tas ikaw government employee ka. What are you praying for? Okay? Lord, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come upon my life as I live and work with these people. And not just the government, even in private society, di ba? Everywhere. You're praying, Lord, ang imong kingdom ang gusto ko makita. Lord, in my heart, Lord, you are my king. You see? You are my king. And so, because of that, Lord, I will live in your kingdom. You know, sa training namon, we talked about Daniel. Okay? Book of Daniel. Talking about how the kingdom of God, despite all the efforts of Babylon to erase Jerusalem, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood up. Why? Because in their hearts, they continued to worship the king. Kabalo sila na ang kingdom of God hindi maguba. So, pero hindi tanan na ang iban ng Israelites na compromise. Eh? Pero si Daniel hindi siya na compromise. Why? Because the kingdom was here. You cannot destroy a kingdom that is in the heart of a disciple. Amo na importante, brethren, pag arata sa kalibutan. You're going to work tomorrow. Not just work. Maybe later this afternoon you're in a house full of unbelievers. Okay. Maybe you're meeting with some friends who are unbelievers. What should your prayer be? Lord, your kingdom come. As my king, as a disciple of the king, I will live this life. That's why, amo ng prayer mo. Lord, your kingdom come. And then, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What an important aspect is that. Diba? And, you, and you, you need to teach that to your children as early as elementary. Elementary. 
Di ba? You're not telling them, O oh, anak, mag-prepare ka ha, kay pag-abot mo sa college, ang pili mo nga course amuni, kay damo kwarta na anak. Di ba? Pag damo na kwarta, na, ang ini nga balay na ginaret na ito, makabakal na itong balay, na makadako itong balay, ang anak, i-pray mo na kay Lord. O di ba? I-pray mo na kay Lord subong pa lang na amuni ang course na pili on mo. Oh, anong natabo sa your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Di ba? O paano ko ang pastor ko anong will ni Lord? You let the Lord do that in time. That's why as young as they are, you're already teaching them, you pray, okay? What is the Lord, uh, how is the Lord building you up as you walk with Him, as you trust in Him? What, what, is, what is He showing you in your character, in your skills that He has given you? Kung anong imong course? Many of us, we fail in this. Eh. How many of us are praying for something? We're not even sure that it's God's will. So, paano na? Hindi eh, papiliton. Some of us, were, we, we think that trembling and shouting will move God to do what we want. No. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if this means, Lord, that nothing's going to change in my life, eh, then, Lord, I will just revere you. You're my father. You're, notice how, the, how that helps. You're my father. You are holy. Lord, I'll just worship you. Your kingdom in my heart. Diba? And your will be done, Lord. Not mine. We've missed that. Okay? The Christian life today has been all about name it and claim it. Have you noticed that? I claim okay, Lord. Where in the Bible does it say we're supposed to claim something? No, dili pa lang. Wala nang claim eh. Diba? Your will be done on earth. Isn't that defe- being defeated? No, it's being submitted. You're submitted to a God, the, God, the verse before this, who knows what you need even before you ask Him. He knows exactly what you need. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Submission. Okay? Next, so verse 11. Give us today our daily bread. I call this dependence and discernment in prayer. Why? First, give us this day. You notice? You are asking God to give you. That's dependence. Okay? You're not saying, Lord, I, let me work hard so that I will work hard para magdako pang ako ng sweldo. No, di ba? Na make me wiser that no, you, you know that everything you need it's God who gives it eh. see, that's dependence you come to God, Lord give me this day, Lord halin sa imo, everything I need Lord, I am totally dependent on you and it's discernment why? this day, give us this day our daily bread okay? you're discerning, Lord what is, what is just right for me? Okay? Daily. Hindi weekly. Hindi monthly. Hindi yearly. <laughs> diba? It's just today, Lord. Today, what do I need? How many Christians are so anxious because we're thinking of the whole year? We're thinking of the whole week? No. Lord, just today, Lord. Just today, just give me, Lord what I need. And it's discernment because it's about bread. For, for the Israelites, bread was staple food. Diba? And you know that joke with Filipinos, diba? Ang joke kasi sa, Pilip, sa Pilipino, masadamo ka rice, that's why excited kita sa Andy rice. Eh. Diba? Okay, pwede ka mag-order Andy rice, diba? tapos isa ka uga na gamay lang, diba? ang joke gani yung sino na, si Dolphy Bian na inaamoy lang, tapos kao na no, diba? That's the Filipino joke. Why? What's important for us is rice. Right? It's very similar kasi to bread. But you know, there's nothing else. Eh? There's nothing there about meat or, or anything. It's just rice. Why? Because our hearts need to be discerning. Our hearts need to be discerning with regards to what God desires for us. See, sometimes we, we think of big things when we just need to be content. Diba? There's one lesson that even in prayer, God already teaches us. You see, 
It's, some people are saying, hala, kung bread lang ang i-pray mo, ito bread lang ang ihatag ni Lord. Diba? Hindi. The Lord knows what you need even before you ask Him. Diba? Just because you only prayed for bread, that's all that only thing is going to give you. No, He's your Father. Diba? He's your Father. He knows what you need. The point here is, number one, nga, dependence. Number two, discernment and contentment. You see, we're content, but we come to the Lord asking Him to give us discernment of what to pray for. We have to be careful, brethren, because turn, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1, it says, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they do wrong. Number two, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be what? Few. But look at what Jesus is teaching us. First, he teaches us reverence. Diba? You see, when you're revering God, you do not treat him as a millionaire who will just give you anything. Eh? No, you're talking, about, you're talking to the creator of the world. You're revering him and worshiping him. And then you're praying, Lord, it's your kingdom that I want to see in my life. Lord, it's your will that I want to be done in your life. So all of a sudden, it's already ginakontrol na niya ni mga prayer. Eh. Diba? So yung ginapray mo na na Toyota Land Cruiser, may Land Cruiser pa ba sa mo? Masama mo na, no? Na medyo ano, medyo nag-ano na lang eh. Sige Lord, bisikleta lang, pwede na siguro, di ba? Maka-exercise pa ko, wala pa gasto sa gasolina. Basta Lord, your will be done on earth. See, it, it, you're already being checked. Now, it does not mean that the Lord is not going to give you what you desire. Sometimes He gives you even more. But you're supposed to be guarding your heart. You see? When you're praying to God, you don't just claim anything. No, you're talking to the Holy Righteous One. You don't bring materialism before Him. You don't bring the love of money before Him. You cannot. Because He is the Holy God. Okay? If whatever God wants to give us, He will give. Hindi kita pabayaan ni Lord. But we don't have to be anxious about it. So, as, as uh, Solomon would tell us Ecclesiastes, don't be quick with your mouth. Don't be hasty with your, with your word, with your heart. That's why there's worship. That's why there's submission. Then we come to the Lord in dependence and in discernment. Next, how should we pray? Look at verse 14. Balik sa Matthew 6. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, I'm sorry, I'm, nag-advance ako, sorry. Wrong notes. <laughs> Verse, uh, verse uh, 12, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Okay? Now why is he talking about debt and debtors? Verse 14 explains it to us. What is this debt that we have to the Lord diba, that we're supposed to ask forgiveness from? You see, when we sin, it's like we owe God a debt. Diba? The Lord, sorry, give Okay? So it's talking about forgiveness of sins. And that's what verse 14 talks about. That's why it's, we, we can translate that into saying, forgive us our sins. Okay? But notice how there's a continuation. As we also have forgiven those who sin against us or our debtors. Okay? Now, generally, I call this portion restoration of fellowship. Okay? As you are praying to the Lord, you're praying to a holy God, you know that there are areas in your life that you need to ask forgiveness for. Okay? Non-stop siya, brethren. Eh. Why? Because we're sinners, right? No matter how the grace of God brings His righteousness upon us, there's always an aspect of our life, di ba? Na nagasin kita sa ginoo eh. That's why, restore, why, why do we ask forgiveness from God? Kasi gusto natin ma-restore ang atong fellowship eh. Pag nagsala kita sa Diyos, 
Ap- naapektuhan ang, ang fellowship nato eh. See? So, as you are in prayer, part of that prayer is, Lord, I want to restore our fellowship. I know, Lord, that when I sin, my tendency is to run away from you. So, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, okay? As, notice what Jesus says, okay? Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. It's together, eh. Diba? Diba? Wash your hands as you are soaping it. So together, eh. Okay? It's, it's, you cannot separate it. When you say, I'm washing my hands, tapos tubig lang ang ginausar mo, kulang. I wash my hands as I use soap to wash it. It's connected. You cannot separate the two. But we want it separated. Diba? Amo ng gusto naton. Gusto naton, gapangay ko forgiveness, Lord, sa imo. Pero, pero pag may nagapangay forgiveness sa aton, ay, <laughs> hindi lang, Lord. Ako kang ikaw, okay. Pero ako kang siya, hindi pwede. But Jesus is saying, no, wait. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. What does that mean, Lord? That's what verse 14 explains. Verse 14, Jesus, again, huh? these are the words of the Lord. These are not the words of Matthew. This is not the word of a human being. This is Jesus himself. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's the Lord. That's his word. If you forgive men, he will also forgive you. But, verse 15, if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Oh, Lord, ano ka man, Lord? Ano klaseng Diyos ka? No, that's not the question. Eh. The question is, ano klaseng tao ka? Okay? You notice how we tend to bring it back to the Lord? Lord, ano ka man? Kapangay ko forgiveness. Hindi mo ko i-forgive. Tungod lang sa hindi ko i-forgive ang ininga tao na nagapangay forgiveness ako. Ano klaseng Diyos ka? Hindi. Ano klaseng tao ka? Na nagapangay ka forgiveness sa ginoo. Tapos ikaw, hindi ka mag-forgive? Di ba? Are we greater than God? Are we so greater than God that we expect Him to forgive us when we sin against a holy and righteous God tapos ang fellow sinner? Mga yung forgiveness aton? Mahambal kita, hindi? Oops, notice. So this is not about, hala, pag hindi ako nag-forgive, but sila ko, mapa-impierno ko. That's not what the Lord is talking about here. He's not talking about going to hell or what. No, He's talking about restoration of fellowship. See, what the Lord is revealing to us here, brethren, in this portion, paranga, is that as a believer, this is not just about me and God. It's also about me and others. Okay? That's why when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment, Lord? The greatest commandment, he says, are these. Dua. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And, you shall love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the commandments, he said, hang on these two commandments, he says. You see, we need to be careful, brethren. We ask him to forgive our debts when we sin, and yet when someone seeks our forgiveness when they sin against us, we will not forgive them. It paints a very uh, dark picture of our hearts. Grabe, no? Kasi who are we not to forgive? And yet we come to the Heavenly Father, okay? whose name is holy. We pray for his kingdom, his will. And here's the Lord saying, it's my will that you forgive. Okay? When someone asks you to forgive them. Eh, bago lang tanatapos sa love your enemies, di ba? Kaya wala talusot eh. Di ba? Love your enemies. Lord, papano ko hindi siya mga yung forgiveness? Ito eh, love. Oh, di ba? Nakalo- Hindi ka na makalusot eh. Love your enemies gan eh. Kung ilong ko si Lord ah. Oh, di ba? Bago lang tanag Matthew 5 verse ano. Eh, Lord, di naman siya nagpangay forgiveness. Hindi. But of course, the context here is someone says, can you please forgive me? Oh, if you remember that, Lord, I just came from you in prayer. 
I just ask you to restore my fellowship with you. And here is someone now wanting to restore fellowship with me. Sincere or not sincere, wait a kabalo, pero ikumbangayo siya forgiveness. Later on, in Matthew 18, I'll not, I'll not take it up there because the clock is already smoking. Okay? You go to Matthew 18, someone asked the Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? Okay. The Lord said, no. Seven times 70. Ah, 490. Okay? So, minsan, oh, Richard, ah, 455 na. Lapit ka na. Hindi eh. The point of the Lord is, hindi ka na mag don't, don't count. If someone asks you forgiveness 70 times, forgive him 70 times. Okay? Because, if you seek restoration of fellowship from the Holy God, Jesus says, it needs to be the same. When a fallen sinner like you asks for forgiveness. How does, how does it end, brethren? Um, it, it's, of course, it ends with that forgiveness, but uh, verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So this deals with our desire for righteousness. Okay? This verse makes us assume that temptation will always be there. Okay? Always. It, it never leaves us until the day we die. There will always be temptation. So, we, so part of our prayer is the desire to walk in the righteousness of God. Okay? Do not lead, now, this is interesting. Look what it says. Do not lead us. Sandali lang, Lord. Ikaw ang nag lead sa Amon? Are you reading it carefully? Do not lead us into the... Kasi God in His sovereignty will bring... He will not tempt because God does not tempt. We see that in James. But He will lead you into a scenario where you will be tempted. Why? Why will God do that? Okay? Again, huh? temptation itself is not sin. Okay? You can be walking, di ba? And then you pass a restaurant that I'm talking about myself, ha? makita mo, ang patron saint ko sa una, si San Miguel. Eh. San Miguel, beer. Frozen beer. Ara sa gre. Okay? Siyempre, amo na ang patron saint ko sa una. Eh. So, ara ka eh. Lord, why did you bring me here? See, that's not the sin. Eh. See, the Lord brought you into, tempt into temptation. Why? So you can say, Lord, help me. Lead me not. No, Lord, deliver me from evil. And when you are delivered, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nakapasar ko. That's what it was, a test. That's what temptation is. It's a test. Do you know that the trial? Do you know that the Greek word for trial and temptation is one Greek word? It's a Greek word that means test. Pag may pagtilaw ka sa mga kabuhi, ano ginahin mo ni Lord? Gina test ka. Who will you trust? See? That's a test. So that's what temptation is also. It's a test for us not to fall into righteousness, but we're praying to Him. See? Lord, I desire Your righteousness. So I pray, Lord, don't lead me into temptation. Lord, kabalo ka naman, Lord. Diba? Kung ano ang hindi ko kaya. And the Lord will honor that prayer. Why? Because ang gusto ni Lord, ma-deliver kita eh, sa sin eh. Diba? So lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So you see the whole, um, the whole aspect of prayer here, brethren. There is reverence. That's very important for our prayer, public or private. Okay. Secondly, there is submission. Diba? In the secret of your heart, you're submitting to God's will. You're submitting to His kingdom. Then, there is dependence and discernment. So, Lord, that is why I bring to you all my needs. I ask you to give. Why? Kaya dependent ako sa imo, Lord. Eh. Hindi sa ako nga kaugulingon, kag sa ibang nga tao. There is restoration of fellowship with God and with others. And then, there is the desire for righteousness. And as you pray this way, there's this 
faith, di ba? That comes and says, Lord, I know that you know what I need even before I ask. Di ba? And so, it is that faith. What is the reward of prayer? Have you ever wondered? Di ba? Kasi for some of us, the reward of prayer is the answer to the prayer. Di ba? Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. Boom! Oh, Lord! Thank you. No. The reward to prayer is not what you prayed for. You know what the reward of prayer is? The reward of prayer is simply you knowing that when you came to that, to that holy presence of God, that by His grace, He heard you. And, and God just says, peace be with you, anak. Okay? I know what you need before you even ask, but you came to me, yeah, remain in my presence. That's Philippians 4, eh? verse 6 and 7. Now, I'll, just, I'll just mention it. You, uh, you can read it on your own. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your requests unto God. That's verse 6. Verse 7 says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That peace, ba? Of knowing the Lord. That's why you, you privately, you come out of your prayer time, you come out knowing, eh, Lord, salamat. Nag-fellowship kita. I revered you. I submitted to you. I depend on you. Our, our fellowship was restored. And as I go out, Lord, I want to live righteously. You know? And you come out of your prayer time, that private prayer time, and you're saying, Lord, ay, salamat. That's the peace. Okay? Let me end with this. No? Psalm 66. It, it's, it sort of summarizes what Jesus is teaching. No? Not, not exactly, no? but look, look what the psalmist says. In Psalm 66, verses 16 to 20. He writes, now, come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Okay? You come out of your prayer time, or even public, private or public, you come out with this psalm and you say, Lord, salamat kit. Diba? Salamat sa ibong grace. And that's what prayer is, brethren. Diba? Enjoy it. Diba? Don't miss it every day. Even public prayer, enjoy nyo ang prayer. Why? That's our fellowship with the Father. Diba? And that's his desire. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you, Gid. Uh, thank you, Gid, sa among nga worship today. Thank you for the songs, for communion, Lord. We thank you. And for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we can enjoy prayer with you because of your reminder that prayer is not for others to see. It's not to be seen by men. It's not to seek their affirmation or their honor, or recognition. Prayer is between ourselves and you, Lord. It's fellowship with you. Whether we pray in public or in private, Lord, may we always remember that it is you and your glory that is the focus of what we do. Salamat, Kino. Thank you, O God. Bless us as we live. May your grace and faithfulness, faithfulness follow us Always, O oh Lord, be our shepherd every moment of the day. Salamat, good Lord. All praises belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's bless the Lord. Let's all stand. Let's worship.